constructive criticism is really important as it helps people get better by giving them feedback on the work they're doing and showing them where they can improve. So how did K-pop stands completely misunderstand this and consider constructive criticism as hate when it comes to idols? One thing to understand about K-pop is that as an industry, it hasn't been focused on signing and vocals all that much. For years, the industry has been focusing on performance skills, visuals, and the ability to build parasocial relationships with fans rather than vocals. To some degree, this was acceptable as the first, second, and early third generation groups used to deliver everything. Some members were strong dancers, others were strong vocalists, but even those who weren't particularly skilled in these fields could hold a note and didn't fall that far behind the other members. Despite everything, companies would rarely debut members who weren't talented in at least one area. In cases when these idols weren't as talented as their peers, they would always strive to improve and keep training to deliver performances every time. Nowadays, it seems like it's the opposite as companies mostly care about debuting the prettiest idols or the ones that can attract the most fans. This phenomenon has become more noticeable at the end of the third generation and the start of the fourth, but these past few years, this has become a standard and people are definitely becoming bothered by it. They're tired of watching a performance and seeing that the idols are either lip syncing or singing with a backtrack so loud that you can barely hear anything. Even if these idols get live performances, you can definitely see the lack of training and skill and of course, this leads to criticism on the public's part. After all, this is the idol's job to sing and dance and they should have at least be decent at it. However, instead of taking the criticism for what it is, fans tend to think of it as hate. Of course, we're not talking about the literal harassment that they receive, but actual constructive criticism over vocals, music, or basically anything else. It's helpful when people give artists feedback on their work as constructive criticism points out what could be better. Good criticism focuses on specific areas for improvement while recognizing the artist's strengths. This kind of feedback is valuable for artists to grow and get better at what they do, and it's something that even the artists appreciate. The person giving this kind of criticism also usually has no malicious intent and may even be a fan of the artist who just didn't like something specific about a release or a performance, yet they're immediately branded as haters or antis. This may be because these fans tend to be young people with enough free time to scour the internet for criticism against their favorite artists and then start fights based on nothing. It may be something as simple as someone saying that they didn't like a release and the replies would be ranging from accusations of being a hater to threats and derogatory comments. This may also happen because the industry puts a lot of emphasis on achievements and success rather than actual talents. This might make fans feel insecure about how good the music actually is or how skilled the idols are, so when faced with actual reasonable feedback, they resort to insults or focus on the sales and charts. It's either that or an issue of fans being so emotionally attached to their idols that they take the criticism to heart and act as if they're personally being attacked when that's clearly not the case. Not only that, but due to the demanding nature of the industry where idols are constantly fighting for success in case the company replaces them with a new shiny group, fans feel like they need to appreciate the hard work poured into the comeback and they believe everybody should do so. Whatever the case is, it doesn't seem like fans realize just how harmful it is to constantly shield idols from criticism and feedback. If idols don't know that they put on a bad performance or that they're not doing as well in something, how will they ever get to improve? What help will it be to idols if they're constantly being praised and showered in compliments for things that they need to work on? This is an example of how fans often want their favorite idol to be celebrated and respected like acclaimed artists, but they don't always like it when their idol faces criticism like the artists usually do. There's also the problematic practice of fans bringing up deceased idols like Guhara and Sully every time their favorite idols receive any criticism. Sully and Guhara took their own lives due to the harassment they got on a daily basis, not because of constructive criticism related to their work. Looking at how these people are using their names so casually, it's obvious that they're not aware of how severe the situation of these idols was. When Sully took her own life, many media outlets connected her passing to depression, resulting from online harassment and the vile comments she was receiving constantly. Before her passing, it was revealed that Sully had frequently urged her agency, SM Entertainment, to address the hate she was receiving more effectively, yet nothing was done about it. Gu Hara faced a difficult situation with her ex-boyfriend, who not only physically harmed her in her home after breaking in, but also threatened to share a private video he recorded without her permission. While hate comments are hard to deal with for any idol, it's insensitive to bring up Sully and Hara as a warning sign against what may happen if people continue to criticize idols. Not only were Guhara and Sully much more than that, but some of the situations that idols get criticism for are in no way, shape, or form comparable to what the two went through. Of course, there are cases where the fans being defensive is more than reasonable. Taking La Seraphim as an example, since they're a pretty recent case of this, they did receive a lot of criticism over their vocal skills after their Coachella performance 
performance. Some of this criticism was well thought out and with no malicious intent as its goal was to get the girls to improve. However, the good feedback was quickly overshadowed by all the people who were just looking for their target of the week. The girls' personal Instagram accounts were swarmed with so many hate comments that Instagram had to intervene and actually put warning signs in their comment section. Not only that, but they received threats of all kinds, to the point that Yunche's cousin posted a story in an effort to stop the vile comments they were receiving. This is one of the reasons that fans tend to be extra sensitive towards the hate that their favorite idols receive, but it doesn't take a genius to differentiate when the comments are mean-spirited and when they're genuine constructive criticism or even opinions with no animosity or hate towards the group or the idol. Another way that K-pop stands manage to victimize their favorite idols is through complaints about the company. Now, we're not claiming that companies are never to blame because we know better, but it seems like fans complain about anything these days and see everything as if it's a big conspiracy theory with everyone seemingly conspiring against the idol. If idols are on a break and are maybe taking a well-deserved vacation, fans will trend hashtags about how the company is keeping them in the basement and sabotaging them. On the other hand, if idols have to work constantly, the fans will complain that they're being overworked. If one member of a group is the first one to get a solo debut, fans might think the company is purposely holding back the other members and so on. Sure, in some cases that tends to be true, but mostly it's just fans appointing themselves as the protectors of these idols. Idols aren't completely helpless like fans might think. Many are adults with influence in their companies and a say in their careers. While companies might not always handle things perfectly, if idols say they're okay with it, fans should trust them. In most cases, idols are actually annoyed by this or don't care about the things that fans consider mistreatment on the company's part. For example, Super Junior's Hee Chul talked about how his fellow member Shindong didn't have lines until the group's third album. However, even if fans nowadays would cause a ruckus if this happened to their favorite idol, Shindong didn't care at all. Hee Chul said he believed it's Super Junior's album nonetheless. It's Super Junior's song. To him, it didn't matter who sang the parts. He always said he would try his best and was fine dancing in the back. Fans of TVXQ's Chang Min also complained about him being overshadowed by Yoon Ho, who was considered K-pop royalty at the time. Despite their complaints, Chang Min has been very clear about how he doesn't mind being second to Yoon Ho and doesn't seek his limelight. There are other instances when idols didn't want to have more lines, either because they were too insecure about their voices or their Korean, yet fans believe that it's not their choice. Of course, there are cases where idols work hard and get minimal lines despite that, but it's kind of condescending for fans to be like, we know the situation better than you, so we're going to be demanding things in your name. Imagine how idols must feel to have their own fans not trust the idol's ability to communicate with their group and company and stand up for themselves. Most of these idols have enough leverage in the company so they can speak out about the way they're being treated. Again, this does not apply to every idol as some really do need fandom power to get better management. For example, when GOT7 fans were unhappy with JYP for not announcing their comeback schedule or sharing teasers on official accounts, the GOT7 members backed the fans' protest trucks. Similarly, Shiny fans used protest trucks to ask SM to move their fan meet to a bigger venue, and the protest actually worked. In another case, when the fans sent support trucks for Taemin, he once again showed appreciation and posted about it. But these cases were special. Both fandoms spoke up about issues that mattered to them, set achievable goals, and even threatened to boycott to make their demands heard. But the issue with many fandoms is that they don't focus on important matters like this. Instead, they use protest trucks to complain about trivial things, so it's no surprise that other people refuse to take them seriously, especially if they're spending money and throwing a tantrum just because they don't like the fact that an idol is dancing with female dancers. It's obvious that sometimes fans aren't even sure if the idols actually want what they're demanding, like a solo album, more lines, or more center time. So wouldn't it be better to let the idols handle it themselves, especially if they hadn't previously complained about the issue? This showed best when Red Velvet's Wendy talked about fans sending trucks in front of the company. These past few years, the protest truck business has been booming in South Korea. From complaints about choreographies and outfits to accusations of mistreatment, fans have found a new way to get their demands across. However, ever since fans started doing this, people have been wondering, does this feel embarrassing for the idols? A Twitter user said, I know idols hide their faces when they come to work and see the trucks out front. Well, Wendy confirmed this in January of this year when she had a fan ask her about protest trucks. Specifically, the fan referenced the group's 10th anniversary comeback and jokingly asked her whether they should send emails to SM or protest trucks. To this, Wendy responded by saying no multiple times and continuing with, come on, no more trucks, no more emails. It's been 10 years for us. We can handle it. We got some power. She advised fans to spend their money on themselves rather than sending trucks, which is the smartest thing to do, yet fans seemingly took offense to that without thinking how Wendy was feeling. The protest trucks also put a bad light on the idols themselves. When 
Luna fans were thinking of boycotting the group after the issues with the contract came up, their plans included sending protest trucks in front of Blockberry Creative. But Korean fans and the girls' legal team strongly advised against it, saying the trucks could harm the members' case and how the public sees them. In the end, though, we have no one to blame for this but entertainment companies. By encouraging and fostering parasocial relationships, they have given fans the idea that they can control everything about the artists' careers, which is why they act the way they do. Because fans feel so close to their idols, they're getting the urge to protect these idols from anything and feel like they know the situation better than the idols do. Unfortunately, this doesn't seem to be changing anytime soon, but we can always hope for the best.